This video will cover the Students tab on the basic version. You can now edit the student information. To do so, you will need to click on Student. You can add, edit, or delete individual students by selecting Add, Edit, Delete. This will pull up another menu that gives you four options. You can add a single student. You can add students by grades, classes, or homeroom. You can view the student list, or you can also print the student list. To add a single student, you will want to click the first option here. You will need to fill in all of the fields with a red asterisk. You can then select the grade, class, or homeroom to place the student in. You can also add a date of birth. Once you have finished putting in the information for the new student, you can click on Submit. You can then choose to link the student with a parent or guardian. If the parent or guardian is in the list already, you can simply click on link to link them. If you wish to unlink them, you will click on unlink. If the parent or guardian is not already in the list, you can click on parent guardian not in list, add as new. This will allow you to add the new parent's information in here, which includes the first and last name, the driver's license number, and the state. You can then select Submit. This will link the new student to the new parent you have added. Once you have finished, you can select Done. You now see that your new student is in the students list. You can go ahead and go back to the admin menu here and we will select student again. Go ahead and click on add, edit, delete. To add a student by grade, class, or homeroom, you can click on add students by grades, classes, homeroom. This will allow you to select a grade, class, or homeroom first. Then you can type in the student's last name, first name, and ID number. Once you have completed this, you can click on Done. That new student will be added to that specific grade, class, or homeroom. Go ahead and click on Add, Edit, or Delete again. To view the student list, you can simply click on View Student List. You can see the list of students from here. If you wish to change the grade, class, or homeroom they are in, you can click on the drop-down menu here in the yellow. You can also click on Detail to edit their information, such as their name, student IDs, or grade, class, or homeroom. You can also simply delete that specific student, and you can also choose to link parents or guardians to that specific student.
Once you have finished linking the parent or guardian, you will want to select Done. This will take you back to the students list. You can go ahead and click on Admin again, and then Student. You can then select Add, Edit, or Delete. The last option here is Print Student List. If you select Print Student List, it will print to the printer that you have set up. I'm going to go ahead and click on Back here. This will take me back to the Students tab. The next tab that we'll go over is the View List. If you select View List, you can once again see all the records of the students. You can edit the grade class or homeroom by clicking on the drop down menu here and selecting a new one. You can also click on Detail to view the student's information or make any changes to the first name, last name, student ID, grade class or homeroom, or date of birth. You can also choose to delete a student by clicking on delete. If you choose to delete the student, you cannot undo it. The message will ask you if you are sure you want to delete the student. You can click on cancel or delete to delete. You can also link students to parents or guardians here by clicking on link parent guardians. If they are already linked to a parent or guardian, you can unlink them by clicking the unlink button, or you can go ahead and link them by clicking the link button. Once you are done linking the students to the parent or guardian, you can click on done. We can now go back to the admin menu. You can select student again. The next tab is your Excuses tab. If you go ahead and select Excuses, you will be able to edit your tardy excuses, early dismissal excuses, and ISS attention excuses. To edit your tardy excuses, you will want to select Tardy Excuses. You will then see the tardy excuses that are already in here. The description of the tardy excuse is on the left hand side here. If you are using an alternative language such as Spanish, you will want to make sure that tardy excuse is translated in the middle here. If the tardy excuse is excused, make sure that you select the box next to that specific excuse. If it's unexcused, make sure the box is not selected. You can also sort the view order here by clicking the arrows. This will change what order the tardy excuses are in. You can also choose to delete a tardy excuse by clicking the trash can on the right hand side here. If you choose to delete a purpose or excuse, you cannot undo this. The message will ask you if you are sure you want to delete the item. You can select delete or cancel. You can also add more tardy excuses by selecting add new student tardy excuse. Please note that you can only add 15 tardy excuses and they must be a 24 character maximum. Once you are done adding your excuses, you can simply click on back. This will take you back to the student excuses where you can edit your early dismissal excuses. To edit those, you will click on early dismissal excuses. You will see your early dismissal excuses for the students. The description of that excuse is on the left hand side here. 
The alternative language, which is Spanish, is in the middle. If that early dismissal excused is excused, please select the box next to each early dismissal. You can change the order of which you view these excuses in by clicking the arrows here next to each excuse. If you wish to delete the early dismissal excuse, please make sure you select the trash can here next to that specific excuse. If you wish to add a new student early dismissal excuse, you can do so by clicking the add new student early dismissal excuse button right here. You can then type in a description, which will be your new early dismissal excuse. You can then type in the alternative language. And if it is excused, make sure you select excused here. You can then click anywhere else on the screen here. Please note that you can only add 15 early dismissal excuses and they are a 24 character maximum. You can then go back to the other menu once you are done by clicking back. You can now edit your ISS detention excuses. To do so, you will click on ISS detention excuses. You are only allowed 10 ISS detention purposes with a maximum of 24 characters. The description or the ISS detention purpose will be on the left hand side here. You also have the alternative language option. If you are using another language such as Spanish, make sure you fill in this part too. You can then sort the order of these by clicking these arrows next to that specific excuse. This will change the order that you see the excuse in. You can also click the trash can next to each excuse to delete it. If you wish to add a new ISS detention purpose, you can click on add new ISS detention purpose here. You can then type in the field here. Once you are done adding your new ISS attention purpose, you can then click on back. It will save automatically. On the right hand side here, you have the excuse requirement option. You can have excuses required for late or tardy. If you do not want excuses required for these, simply uncheck the box. If you want excuses required for the student self checkout early dismissal, you will want to make sure the box next to the self checkout is selected. If you do not want excuses to be selected for the self checkout early dismissal, please unselect the box. After you are done, you can simply click on done. This will take you back to the Students tab. The next tab that I'm going to go over is the Printing Options on the left hand side. When you click on Printing Options, this will display the different printing options you have for student passes. You can choose to print IDs on the passes. You can choose to print IDs on temporary ID passes. The ID is the ID number for that specific student. If you are using a barcode scanner, you may want to print barcodes on the temporary ID badges for students to be able to scan that barcode when they check out. 
You can also have their pictures printed on the passes if you do have student pictures. If you do not have student pictures, you can choose to print the school logo or mascot on the passes. If you wish to keep records of those student passes, you can choose to print duplicate passes for TARDI. You can also print the duplicate passes for early dismissal passes. You can also print excused or unexcused on the tardy passes or excused or unexcused on early dismissal passes. If you wish to turn any of these printing options on, make sure you select the box next to that specific printing option. If you wish to disable that printing option, just uncheck the box next to that specific printing option. When you are done, simply click Done. This will take you back to the Students tab. The next tab that you're going to see is the Students Plus. Go ahead and click on the Students Plus tab on the left hand side. The Students Plus will allow you to set up a specific amount of allowed late and tardies and early dismissals and you can set up disciplinary actions to go along with that. After you've selected the Students Plus tab, you will see two options. You can turn on the Students Plus for late and tardy, and you can also turn on the Students Plus for early dismissal. I will go ahead and show you late and tardy first. After you've selected the Students Plus for late and tardy, you will select Student Plus options. This is where you will set up the Students Plus. You will be asked if you want to track by semester or grading period or a specific amount of days. You can choose either depending on how your school semester goes. I will go ahead and select semester grade period. When you click on next, you will need to set up the students plus for the semester grading period. First, you will set up the first day of school here. And you also need to set up the last day of school. You can also set up semesters or grading periods if you go by nine weeks. You need to put the start date on the left hand side here and the end date on the right hand side. After you've set up your semesters, you can go to the bottom here this is where you will put in the amount of late and tardies that are allowed. So if you allow one late and tardy, two, three, and four. And on the right hand side, you can put the disciplinary action. So the first one might be something like a warning. And the second one might be something like a phone call home. The third one can be something like detention. And the fourth one might be something like an in-school suspension. So after you have that set up, you can go ahead and go to the left hand side here and set up the late and tardy pass print options. These are the printing options for your students plus late and tardy passes. So the first option here is you have the ability to print late or tardy passes. You can print the tardy passes with the student's ID number. You can also print the tardy passes with the teacher's name on it. If you're using a barcode, you may want to print with the student ID barcode. 
And if you wish, you can also print the student's picture on here. If you are wanting to select any of these options, just make sure you're selecting the box next to each option. If you don't want that to print on there, just make sure you unselect it. At the bottom here, we have the detention text on the late and tardy passes. If you would like the notifications to be printed on the late and tardy passes, please select detention warning text will be printed. If not, then select the first option, no detention warning text will be printed. And the last option that you have at the bottom here, it will let you know if the exceeding threshold will or may result in the detentions being issued to the student. So the detentions being issued to the student are going to be the disciplinary actions that you have put for each specific amount of late and tardy that is allowed. After you have set that up, you can simply click on back in the top right hand corner here. The next thing that you're going to see is the detention notice options. This is similar to the printing options. You basically have the same things, but it's for the detention notices. So if you want the students to be notified on the passes, you have the ability to print the detention notice pass. You can add the student's name to the detention or ISS. You can have it print with the student's ID number. You can also print with the teacher's name. If you're using a barcode scanner, you may want to print with the student ID barcode. And you can also print with the student picture on it. If you wish to select any of these, make sure you're selecting the box next to each one of these options. Once you're done with this, you can go ahead and click on back. The last thing that you will see is the alert notifications. If you want to set up alert notifications for your students plus, go ahead and click on alert notifications. You can have the administration be notified when a student is late or tardy. You can also have parents being notified. If you want the administration to be notified, please select the boxes here on the left hand side. The LT stands for late and tardy. ED is early dismissal. LT and ED combined is early dismissal and late and tardy combined. On the right hand side, we have the parent and guardian notifications. If you want them to be notified for the LT or late and tardy, you can select yes. If you want them to be notified for the early dismissal, please select yes for early dismissal here. And if you want them to be notified for the total combined, please select yes here. In the box below that, you can put the email body. So for example, This is what it would look like for a late and tardy. You can put this for the body of the email or you can put something else like a general message. If you select all for any of these, it will send that alert notification to the parent and guardian every time the student checks in um, with a late or tardy or early dismissal. Yes would mean that an alert is sent when the allowed is exceeded. You can go ahead and click on set up email notification and you can add email addresses that you want to get alerted. So this would be, for example, any of the administrators or parents and guardians that will receive the late or tardy or early dismissal. This would mostly be for the administrative side. If you do want the parents or guardians to receive the alert notifications, it is important that you add the email addresses to every single parent or guardian when you import them.
So now that you've set up the students plus for the late and tardy, we'll go ahead and go over the students plus for early dismissal. You can go ahead and click on back here. We'll go all the way back. So now that you're back on the students tab here, you can go ahead and click on students plus again. We'll select students plus for early dismissal. You can then select student plus options under early dismissal. Again, you can track by semester, grading period, or a specific amount of days. I'll go ahead and do days tracking for this one. You can go ahead and click on next. You'll first need to set up the start date for school and the end date. So I've already done that here. And then you can select a specific amount of days. It goes all the way up to 180 days. For the early dismissal, you'll need to put that in in the middle here. The first half of this is the late and tardy. The second is early dismissal. So again, you'll want to put the allowed early dismissals on the left hand side here. So I'll go ahead and do that. And on the right hand side, you'll put the discipline action. After you've done that, we can go to the left hand side here and look at the early dismissal pass printing options. This is what's going to be printed on the early dismissal passes. If you do want specific things printed on there, you can print the early dismissal pass itself. You can print the student ID on there. You can also print the teacher's name. If you're using a barcode scanner, you may want to print it with the ID of the student. You can also print the pass with the student's picture on it. If you want the detention text to be printed on the early dismissal passes, please select detention warning text will be printed. If not, select the first option, no detention warning text will be printed. And the last option here is exceeding the threshold number will or may result in detentions being issued to the student. If you wish to let the student know that it will result in the detention being issued, then you will need to select will. If it only will may result in the detentions being issued, please select may. After you've set that up, you can go ahead and click on back. So you've now set up your students plus for late and tardy and early dismissal. Go ahead and click on back again. And we're gonna click on done at the bottom here. The next tab that we have is your student activity tab. The student activity is only used for after school activities and not regular check-in and check-out. So it's very important that you know that if you have this activated, you will not be able to use the normal check-in and check-out like you normally would. To turn on the student activity, you want to go ahead and select the box next to student activity check-in and check-out. So after you've activated the student activity check-in and check-out, you'll see a few options that pop up under here. You can use the check-in purposes, which will be the purposes that you select when you check in a student. You can use the checkout purposes, which will be the purposes you select when you check out a student. If you're using it for after school, you may want to set it up for after school here by selecting the box next to after school. If you have a signature pad, you can go ahead and select signature required for after school. To set it up for after school, you will need to click on set up here. 
and this will allow you to put an hourly rate and the days to pay for an after-school program. Uh, that way the, the parents know how much they have to pay for the after-school program whenever they pick up the child. At the bottom here, you're also able to print receipts for the checkout. So you can print it with the Dymo printer, or if you have a separate printer hooked up, you can print it on the report printer. If not, please select none. You can also block the admission if the payment is not made. And in the middle here, you will want to put the after school office close time on the left hand side. So these are going to be your hours here, and then your minutes, and then AM or PM. And then on the right hand side, you'll put the late pickup penalty charge. Some schools for after school programs, they do have the late pickup penalty charge. So this will be depending on what you guys have at your school. After you've set that up for your after school program, you can go ahead and click on done. Go ahead and click on the student activity again. We're going to go ahead and uncheck the after school here and check the use check-in and check-out purposes and then click on done. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main menu to show you what it looks like when you have the student activity turned on. So go ahead and click on the students tab here. So you now see that it says student activity check-in check-out. You can only check in or check out here. Go ahead and click on check-in. It works similar to the normal check-in, so you'll need to select the name from the list first, or you can start typing in the last name of the student. And then you'll need to select the purpose for the check-in here. So some examples are computer use, library program, research. These could all be after-school activities that you have at your school. When you go ahead and click on done, this will check in the student. To check out the student from student activity, you will want to click on students again. You'll want to click on check out. You'll see a list of students who are currently checked in. You'll want to either select the name from the list or start typing in the last name of the student. You'll then want to select the purpose of the student activity check out. Once you have selected a purpose, go ahead and click on done. This will check out the student. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the student settings under the admin tab. So go ahead and click on admin. You'll need to put in your administration password, which is Valley. And then we'll go ahead and click on students again. And select student activity. The very last thing that I'm going to go over under the student activity is the auto checkout password for faculty and staff and student activity. So if you wish to check people out from the student activity or any faculty and staff, your password will be located right here. To change this, you just click in the field and type in whatever you want. After you've done that, you can go ahead and click on done. And just to show you, the auto checkout is actually located on the main menu here. You can go ahead and click on students, and it's going to be this gray tab, the gray circle right here. It'll ask you to please enter your auto logout password. Now we changed it to checkout, so I'll go ahead and click on type in checkout. So that will actually check out all of the faculty and staff and students that are checked in under student activity. Okay, let's go back to the student settings under the admin tab. Go ahead and click on admin and put in your administration password, which is Valley. Go ahead and select student. And we're going to go ahead and turn off the student activity for now. So select student activity again and uncheck the box next to student activity check-in 
check out. Go ahead and click on done. The next tab that I'm going to go over is going to be your student tracker tab here. The student tracker actually allows students to check in and check out and then check back in. It's mainly targeted for students who check out for an off-campus lunch and then check back in. So go ahead and click on student tracker. You will want to select student tracker for check in and check out here. You can also set up the alert time limit. You will need to put in the hours here and the minutes on the right hand side. You can also set up alert notifications for when they check in and check out. This can be sent via email or text alert. To add a new email address, just select add new email address here and you will need to put in the email address and click OK. You can also set up text alert notifications. To add one, you would click on add new cell phone number and put in the cell phone number here. You will also need to put in the first name and the last name of the person. Once you've done that, you can click OK. After you've set that up, you can go ahead and click on admin here. And we'll go back to the student tab. If you have pictures of students in your school check-in program and you want to delete all of the pictures, you will want to select delete pictures. This will delete all the students pictures on file and this is something that you cannot undo. So if you're sure you want to continue, go ahead and select delete. If not, go ahead and click on cancel. The next tab that we have is edit or delete recent tardies and edit or delete recent dismissals. You can edit or delete any of your recent tardies within five days of checking the student in. So go ahead and click on edit, delete, recent tardies. So here we have the students who we checked in within the last five days. You can edit the grade class or homeroom that they're in, the purpose. You can also edit the date and time by clicking the field here and then you can type in whatever you want here. Let's say maybe that was the 14. You can also delete the late or tardy completely by selecting the delete button here off to the side. So we'll go ahead and delete one of these. It'll ask you if you're sure you want to delete. Just click on delete or no if you don't want to delete it. Go ahead and go back to the admin tab. And then you're going to click on student again. Edit or delete recent dismissals is going to be the same thing here. So go ahead and click on edit, delete recent dismissals. It'll show you the recent dismissals that you've had at your school. Again, you can edit the date and time here by clicking the field. You can edit the grade, class, or homeroom here by clicking the drop down menu. You can also edit the purpose, or you can delete that completely. Just note that with the edit, delete, early dismissals, and late and tardies, it does become permanent after five days. So after five days, you actually cannot edit the information or delete that late or tardy or early dismissal. Go ahead and go back to the admin tab. And you're going to click on student again. On the right hand side of the students page here, we have some miscellaneous options. The first one, if you want to require a grade, class, or homeroom when students check in and check out, make sure you check the box next to the first option. This will have the students select their grade, class, or homeroom first before selecting their name to check in or check out. The second one here, you must enter an adult name for student checkout. If you're doing the student self-checkout for the checkouts or early dismissals, 
and you want to enter an adult name or be able to type it in, make sure you select the second option here. You can also enter an adult name for the student late and tardy check-in. Display limited pick list. This will only work on touchscreen mode, so if you're going to use this, please make sure that you're using a touchscreen. This will limit the amount of names that you can see in the list. As you saw before, the list will display everybody's name at once if you're checking in or checking out. If you wanted to limit that, you can check this box and you would have to start typing in a name in order to see any of the names come up. If you've purchased a barcode scanner, you can use this for check-in and check-out. You would just need to make sure that you select this option for the use of barcode scanner. If you want to use hall passes, make sure that you select the hall pass option here. This will have a hall pass option displayed under the students tab on the main menu. If you wish to use a package drop-off, please select the package drop-off option. This will allow you to print continuous paper or peel and stick labels to put on an item so that it gets dropped off to a student. The next option here is the late to class option. If you want to allow students to check in multiple times during the day because they have a class schedule, please select the late to class option and set up the class schedule on the right hand side. You will need to click it. You will need to set up the classes here on the left hand side with the class name and then the starting hour and the starting minute. This will allow your students to check in again at that time for that class. Go ahead and go back to the admin tab here and click on student. The next option is going to be your after school option here or after hours. If you want to use this option, you must turn on the student activity. So go ahead and click on student activity and select student activity check in and check out. We're going to go ahead and click on done and then select after hours. You'll need to enter the after hours here. You will first need to select the after hour method. You can enter the hours or select the time. And then you will need to enter the after hours here. You will first need to select the student's name from the list or start typing in the last name of a student. Then you can click on next. You must enter the date of the after hours. and then enter the number of hours. Then you can click on done. That will add the after hours to that specific student. Let's go ahead and turn this off. If you're using a signature pad, you may want to require a signature for the late and tardy. You can also require a signature for early dismissals. And these two will only work with a signature pad, so please make sure you have one. If you wish to use the early dismissal sign out for now or later, you need to enable this option right here. This will allow you to select if you want to check out a student now or later at a specific time. You can also enter student IDs to check in or check out a student. If you select this option here, it will get rid of the list completely. So now the only way that you can check in is by entering the student ID number. Let's go back to the main menu here. Go ahead and click on students. You now see that you must enter the ID number in order to check in. Go ahead and go back to the admin tab here and type in your administration password, which is Valley. 
and go ahead and go back to the students tab the very last thing that I'm going to go over for the manual entry of the student ID you can either have the student ID hidden or you can have it displayed if it is hidden it will be displayed as asterisk if it is displayed it will be displayed as the student ID numbers go ahead and go back to the admin tab now and that concludes this video to access additional videos please visit us at schoolchecking.com